Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share an unboxing and first look at the HP Elite Dragonfly Notebook. This was furnished to me by HP for review purposes. It retails for a little under $2,000 US dollars and is aimed squarely at business users. Now, how is a product like this different from the HP Spectre X360 uh, 13T that I reviewed at the end of last year? Well, it's all about build quality and security. And you'll see that as I go through the unboxing. Uh, we do have LTE on board, so there is a radio that is optional, that's independent of whichever display you pick. I believe the one that HP shipped to me here has the Shoreview 1000 uh, nit display. In addition to that, we have an Intel uh, Core i5 8th gen processor. And if you're wondering why it's not the latest and greatest in terms of being 10th gen, very simple. It's because the 10th gen processor is not uh, certified V Pro by Intel as of yet. And what that means is that it is not actually rated for business use when it comes to security. So there I've dumped out everything from the box. Let's get right into it. Uh, power cord right here in terms of what goes to the wall. Standard 65 watt HP charger like you saw with the HP Spectre. I happen to like that 65 watt charger a lot. It's compact. Uh, you're not going to have to carry around a large brick. Uh, we also have, uh, this is a USB-C to RJ45 adapter right here. So that's nice to be included. Another clear signal, this is a business machine. So 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM, a 256 gig uh, NVMe drive on board. And as I mentioned, a 13.3-inch uh, Full HD 1,000-nit uh, SureView display. And you might be saying to yourself, why is this $2,000? Well, I already mentioned why. It's because at the end of the day, this is a two-in-one designed strictly for business. Uh, you can see we've got the blue color here. And I have to say, it is a really nice machine at 2.2 pounds. Uh, design cues are similar to the HP Spectre, but you know, no gaudy, flashy stuff. This is, again, strictly business. Uh, so while it may seem expensive for the internals, you have to remember this is not something you're going to pick up at Best Buy. This is designed uh, with one purpose only, and that is to satisfy business users. And that doesn't mean you can't pick it up if you're not a business user, uh, but you know, it's recommended. Let me get the paperwork out of the way. It's not really too much to look out there. Get this out of here. Little uh, information. And of course, this does come with Windows Pro, I believe. Uh, you actually do get software, something that doesn't come with machines anymore. Uh, it's usually partitioned. And let's just take a look around this machine. So I like this matte finish. Uh, we have on the right side, or the left side, excuse me, it's the right side, <laughs> HDMI out, that is a full-size port right there. We have a headphone jack, two Thunderbolt 3 ports, so that's definitely nice. We have a notch right here in order to actually open up the machine, something that is non-existent on the consumer line of uh, Spectre products. So another nice thing to have uh, built into this, move this stuff over. Uh, on the left side, we have a USB Type-A port, the power button, and then a lock. And there is no micro SD card slot on this laptop. On the bottom, uh, you can see we've got four uh, torque screws right there, a fifth right there. Seems like all of the cooling is going to be coming out of the back side of the PC. Uh, these appear to be the speakers, but I believe the speakers are actually uh, front firing. So let's open this up and take a look. Now, bear in mind, as I mentioned, 1000 nit uh, display on this machine. Uh, it's, you know, still branded as Bang & Olufsen uh, speakers. I imagine the speaker performance is going to be better than what I've experienced uh, with the HP Spectre X360. And also remember, this is a 360 degree hinge. So that's really the, the novelty, in my opinion, to this machine is that you have that flexibility uh, while still maintaining business build quality and security. Fingerprint scanner, uh, Windows Hello IR up at the top, uh, nice large trackpad. I mean, I like the look and feel of this machine a lot. 
Uh, this is, I believe, made out of magnesium, so we're not dealing with aluminum uh, like you do on the consumer Spectre line. Uh, and again, this is lighter and superior build quality. Let's go ahead and power it up, see if I have any juice. I like that the power button is actually uh, raised, but it doesn't look like we have any juice, so let me go ahead and hook it up. I have a Type-C 65-watt charger sitting right here, ready to go. Come around to the, the right side of the machine where those Thunderbolt ports are, and let's see if I can get some power now. We should have it. Mm -hmm. Still not powering on? No, oh, I just saw the backlight come on. So I guess I was doing too long of a press. Let's see if we get the screen on. And of course, I'm going to do a full review of this machine. I'm going to put it through its paces. I'm going to, uh, you know, test it against other uh, eighth gen uh, machines that I have in the house. I mean, the 10th gen processors don't blow this away, but this is missing Iris Plus graphics. And if that is something important to what you do on a daily basis, then that is a big deal. I'm not sure how much bloatware is going to be on this. I think that's another differentiating factor between uh, the elite you know, business line, essentially, and you know, the consumer grade line. And uh, even though this screen is rated at 1,000 nits, again, that is for the shore view privacy feature. So I'm not anticipating that it's going to, you know, fry my eyeballs. Um, I also don't expect it to outperform the OLED display uh, that the Spectre has. And unfortunately, there is no OLED option uh, for this machine. You can already see the SureView in effect because I can see from that angle, it's kind of difficult to read. Uh, and that's intentional. And as soon as I turn it so that you can read it on camera, it becomes more difficult for me to read. And that is the whole idea of the sure view display. But overall, I like the build quality. Um, key travel is the same as the Spectre, but something I can tell you immediately from touching these keys is that they are tighter. Uh, on the Spectre, they're a little bit more loose, the chiclets. Uh, they, they have a little bit more give. It seems like they're tighter. In fact, the whole machine seems tighter. Uh, by the way, no creaks, no build quality issues. That's kind of what I expect out of a business grade machine is that out of the box, it's gonna be a rock, even if it only weighs 2.2 pounds. And that's the beauty of this. You're gonna get solid battery life, great build quality. I mean, those are the things you hope to get if you're spending this kind of money on a business machine. So, you know, I will put it through its paces, do some benchmarking. I'm not expecting uh, benchmarks that I wouldn't traditionally see out of a eighth gen Core i5 processor. Uh, again, 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM and, you know, a PCI Express drive that it's fairly small. I don't expect the throughput to be uh, phenomenal, but uh, overall, you're buying this machine, as I stated at the top of the video, for one intent, which is really business. And if it happens to be your personal machine as well, it'll still do everything pretty much that you'd want an Ultrabook to do because of its form factor uh, and overall uh, capability. And then to boot, the LTE spec is great if you need it. I mean, after all, right now I'm covering uh, the Samsung Galaxy Book S, which is a very inexpensive machine, very well built, but it's driven by a Qualcomm processor. Yes, it does have uh, an LTE uh, radio on board, but here, the beauty versus, let's say, the Spectre X360 13T is that that LTE radio is only available with the OLED display. Here, if you go with any display, you can optionally select uh, the LTE radio, so it's not specific to one high-end display for this build. But it's a nice machine, certainly not for everyone. I will be comparing this uh, to the Spectre, if you were wondering. I'll also be comparing this uh, to the Vios that I have before they go back. Uh, so I have a, a nice breadth here of different laptops to compare it to. I may even go as far as to compare it uh, to the Samsung Spin 7, which does have an i5 uh, 8th gen Intel processor, uh, although that machine only has eight gigs of RAM. And then I also have, of course, the Lenovo uh, C740, which has a 10th gen processor, but is also limited by the eight gigs of RAM, but very similar in terms of footprint. Of course, this is the lightest weight. Uh, the closest machine I have presently in-house that compares to this in terms of weight and overall performance would be the Vios, because uh, the 
SX12 is actually in the same weight class as this machine, which is very impressive. Uh, but again, this is not for everyone. This is specifically for business users uh, that want exceptional build quality, need that sure view display, at least in this build's case. I happen to like the fit and finish a lot, but that's not surprising. Uh, I am a Spectre owner, and that wasn't because of a love for HP. It was because I literally went through just about every machine on the market to find the one that best fit my needs. And that's what everyone should be doing. Uh, this isn't about brand allegiance or being a fan of a company. It's about finding what you need and getting it. Um, and that's hopefully what you get out of my channel. Uh, there is a kill switch, by the way, I now see for the camera, at least it appears to be one, which is interesting because the kill switch on the Spectre is a physical button. Here, it looks like we have an actual, nope, I'm incorrect. That is not a kill switch, so I take that back. It looked like it, um, looked like there was a slot there. Uh, at any rate, I will cover this, get back to all of you. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Hit the like button, and as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.